so here's my expansion joint material. Just half inch thick expansion joint foam is what it is. Similar to shipping foam, really, is what it reminds me of. Let's quickly do a back of the napkin, uh, just in the head, calculation on how much this floor is going to expand and if this is going to be enough. And it should be. At least I believe it will be. So concrete's expansion is very similar to steel's expansion. That's why you can put rebar into concrete and they don't tear each other apart due to temperature changes. And I know that steel on average expands about a thousandth of an inch per inch per 100 degrees Fahrenheit you know, in all directions, right? So an inch block of steel, raise it 100 degrees, it'll expand to, you know, a thousandth of an inch larger than what it was. So this is 13 feet wide, the pad. So 13 feet, what is that in inches? 13 feet, so that's 146, I think, 146 inches. So if we raise the temperature in here, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, this pad would expand right to left about 146 thousandths of an inch. That's half inch material, so slightly over an eighth of an inch expansion, more than good enough right to left. Now front to back is totally different because the expansion's the same per unit, but there's a lot more units in the length, right? It's 47 feet long, so that's going to expand, what is that, 47 and 12 inches, that's, that's 564, 564 inches from front to back. So this will expand per 100 degrees Fahrenheit in length slightly over a half of an inch, right? Five-eighths of an inch. No, not five-eighths of an inch. Yeah, five-eighths of an inch is 0.625. So slightly over half an inch. Let's just say that. We'll have expansion joint material in the back and in the front. So we'll have an inch of expansion capability front to back, which is more than enough. And if we get temperature swings any larger than that, I don't care if this pushes on the pad or not, right? So should be adequate, I think. Anyway, back of the napkin, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's pretty close. So there's a look at our expansion joint material. Nothing fancy, just some soft foam, right? It's got a tear line on it. Looks like you could take a half inch off of it if you wanted to easily. And we're just connecting that to the wall with uh, some construction adhesive. Man, that autofocus is absolutely horrible. Using the old uh, caulking gun, right? She's so excited. I haven't talked much about hazelnut. She's gotten big. She's, she's, she's what? She's in good shape. Um, but we have to watch her really close because she has, <laughs> she has, uh, she has seizures. She does have health issues, and she will sometimes fall straight out of the tree and start having a you know, seizure on the ground. So we have to watch her. She's. She's good, but you know she's she's got some issues. She's by far the best jumping squirrel that we've had out of all three of the, of the squirrels we've raised. The uh, little hazelnut is a good jumper. Stop biting me! Get on the tree. They love to play. That's really all they want to do. Crazy, what a fit.
you get in the bail. Yeah, the squirrel in the bail. So I'm in phase two of my gutter installation. It's not raining today, so I figured I'd take advantage of that. I bought a tube of this gutter sealer. It's just an adhesive that stays flexible, or a sealer that stays flexible, because you know these aluminum gutters swell and contract, and I don't want it leaking at the joints. So I just bought, bought a tube of it. It's not very pricey. I gotta get these gutters on the lower side of the shop, because they're gonna erode all that water that runs off the roof is going to erode my bank that's supporting my shop extremely fast if I don't go ahead and start taking care of that. So putting gutters on the lower side of the shop was a big priority for me. I'm glad to have it done. My son helped me. It was definitely harder than the other side simply because there's just no access, with at least no ladder access. Where I extended the overhangs of this roof by a foot, that made it even harder than it already was to reach up to the, you know, to the fascia board and get, especially trying to adjust gutters, right? They gotta be pretty close. So we ended up just getting on the roof and doing it made it easier. What's so good about that? It's just an adhesive that, or glue that stays somewhat flexible. Because these are aluminum, they will expand and contract you know, with heat. Plus What's the that? Mm -hmm. So if the adhesive was just strictly solid or dried hard, mm -hmm. uh, it would crack and start leaking. So if it stays flexible, you know, it moves with the gutters instead of... Is that silicone stuff? I don't know if it's silicone or not. It's, it's something like that. Alright. Uh, that was close. Ran off the roof to save it. She had to jump off to save us. We wore out a pair of pliers. Yeah, I know. There we 
go. You let go of it, it won't fall now. I'll have to mount it to the building. Well, there's the downspout hooked up at least. Okay. Uh, How are you touching that to uh, With uh, straps and concrete anchors. Now, like that. Make sure that I'm level. So the reason this looks so high off the ground is because this is going to be filled filled with dirt back here. So it won't quite look like that after after it's done. Here's the concrete anchors that I'm going to use. You just put them in the hole and then hammer this pin in and it spreads it out. So it's just a bracket to mount this gutter. Those are really nice anchors. They look good, right? And they hold pretty good for stuff like this. Uh, these are made by Cobra. Drive Nail Anchors is the brand, or is the name. I think I need to pick up some shorter bits. I don't have any of the short mason bits. Well, I don't have a quarter inch short mason bit. I got a few of the others. Right. Is this supposed to go in there or not? Come on. I didn't make it easy. That's good enough. Now once that's filled in, you know, and nobody's gonna look at this anyway. But still, now all the water will go quite a ways down to the creek, right? Get it away from this area. So it's raining. Let's climb up on the roof. See if our gutters are doing what they should be doing. I don't see water pouring over the edge, so that's a good start. Let's walk down here. Wow, this is nice. Walk down through here without you know, pouring rain on you. Oh, it is working. I can hear it running out the pipe. Listen. Now, like I said, this is not going to look like this when I'm done. It's not raining hard, but it's moving a little My truck window's down. It's working. It's working. Looks pretty good to me. Don't see any deep spots or anything. The water's moving from this end down to the sh to the uh, downspout. I didn't see any leaks in the joints while I was down there. So that's a good thing. People have mentioned gutter guards and stuff because of all these trees and stuff. Will definitely you know, fill these gutters every year probably 17 times with leaves and twigs and stuff we'll trim them back as much as we can but you know the wind blows leaves and you're not going to stop it so possibly some gutter guards of some sort although i'm extremely skeptical of those 
especially some of the ones with the little holes. When you have the leaf stems or like a cedar or a evergreen tree with the little twigs, man, that just gets stuck in those. I've seen it. Then you got to pick each one out individually. Can't blow them out, can't sweep them out. But it's working. Water's moving good. So here's what I've decided to do, and that is to pour directly to the top of the pad from the center of the shop back, even though that will put a little air, about an inch and a quarter by the time we get to the very back of, into our new pad. You know, I'm, I'm willing to, to live with that, right? Because no pad's perfect. You just get them as close as you can, and I want to avoid as much of a transition as I can. Plus, it really won't matter from the center of the shop back because I plan to build the wall of this grinding room back right over this transition, so you won't even see it. But from that point forward, you will, and that's where we're going to build our screed plate, and then we'll address the inaccuracies in the old pad in the future, but I'm not willing to put that much error into the new work from there forward. So that's the plan. Pour directly to the top of the pad here, screed plate from here up. So this doesn't convey well through, uh, through the camera, but hopefully you can see how poorly uh, this concrete was graded. Right here is the one of the worst spots, a big old pocket. Now I'd like to think that they did this on purpose, not the pocket, but graded this so heavily towards the door to you know, run water outside of the shop, but I just don't think that's the case. They didn't put rebar in the concrete, they didn't put a footer on the shop, they didn't compact the ground, so why would they have then said, whoa, you know, we need to grade that towards the door. Really I just think, you know, maybe they didn't know, right? and they just done the best they could. But we're going to have to work up to this, and our new pad's going to be higher than this uh, old pad. So we got to put a screen plate here. Uh, we got to have something that's strong enough to keep the concrete from bowing it, and you know something thin enough to where we don't have a huge gap here when we pull that screen plate out once this concrete's you know, set hard enough to remove it. So that's what we need to work on, is our screen plate. So I've just set this plate on top of the rebar here and I can just barely see the laser on here and all I'm going to do is mark it on one end, mark it on the other, straight line in between the two, make a cut all the way down the length of it, and then concrete anchor this to the old pad but in a way that I can pull it out, right? But yet it will hold it up against the pad flush. So that's the plan. So right about there is where it's going to be, and I need to fix this to the pad, but yet in a way that it can be removed as well. So we'll put an anchor out here. Here. There. And maybe one or two back there.
So there's what three inches looks like. It's quite a bit, right? There's going to be quite a lip there. But that three inches is not a bad thing, actually, as long as it continues over quite a ways um, to this way, because that's a pretty good amount. That's enough for a s small concrete pour, actually. You know, use some bonding agent and uh, potentially you know, just cap this pad right up here. Now, I don't know how it acts over here. It may come up high, but, you know, we got too much too much stuff over there to check it. But you get the idea. It doesn't really matter, but then it tapers off into nothing. So I think bringing this grade up an inch was a good idea and changing from my original idea of splitting the difference almost between the air front and back, right? I was an inch lower. That means even though this pad is an inch high right now, it'd be two inches high if I poured seven inches thick and left the grade as it was. The only benefit to doing it the way I originally intended was that it would take an inch of air out of the front, right? I decided I'd move the majority of my air up front, right? That gives me you know, a good two and a half, three inches, right? That I can skim coat the top and a thicker skim of concrete if I use like a, you know, a grout mix, it'll be a better outcome because it'll be thicker, right? It'll have more more strength to it, I believe. So I may texture the floor, put some anchors in it, potentially, you know, I don't know, use a bonding agent, and then pour a skim coat over this. And just accept the inch error that I'm going to have, inch and a half um, high on my new pad in order to screed to this floor from basically here back. But you know, the transition will be good and this wall will cover it anyway, so it doesn't make any difference. But I think that was my best option given the circumstances that uh, you know, I'm working with here. So I've gave this expansion joint a lot of thought and not that I don't think that what I have here you know if it stayed in place wouldn't work. I think it would work just fine. The problem is that I don't have anything to screed to on this side and I can easily see you know a few guys in here pumping concrete around this stuff flopping off the wall because it hasn't stuck well to anything that I've tried and it's just peeling off on its own. So you know, imagine it getting hit with a screed and stuff. I've just decided that I'm not going to use this stuff. I'm going to peel this off, and I got something that I think will work even better. Give me something to screed to, and perfectly serve as an expansion joint as well.
So let me tell you why I chose to use these products, at least my thought process behind uh, why I chose these. Now I needed something to screed to, something to you know, put a board on to pull the concrete out good and level all the way across the shop, something that wouldn't move. So this one by six wet treated lumber, you know, plenty good for that. I also need an expansion joint around the perimeter. This will somewhat act as an expansion joint on its own because it's wet treated. It's probably as expanded as it's ever going to be, right? You can, you can almost see the, the treating uh, agent that's in this that's so wet. And it will only dry out and shrink in the future. At least that's my thought anyway. But I decided that I would also cap this with some of this half inch insulating foam just in case, right? And to give some insulating property in between the pad and the, and the wall, right? I don't know if you'd want to use this on its own. It's relatively rigid, although, you know, it will give some. And I'm not for sure if you'd want to use this on its own as an expansion joint. But between the two, right, you're going to have a gap between this material and the lumber and in between the lumber and the wall. And all together, it should give way more than enough expansion room for my concrete pad to, to grow or to move, right? So that's my thought process behind uh, the materials that I chose. Should work. Should work fine, I think. So I've got some work that I need to do along this back wall before I can put my expansion joint all the way across it. And where I cut out this center section of pad, I couldn't get my wet saw completely flush against the wall. So it left me with a portion of the old pad, the old concrete floor, sticking out from under the wall a bit. And that stops me from running my expansion joint completely, you know, against the wall. So I'm going to have to use air hammer and chip that out a little better. Uh, that way I can get a good flush joint all the way across the back of the shop and it doesn't look funny, you know, on one side versus the other. Not that that really matters, but, you know, I'd like for it to be a little neater than what it would be otherwise if I just left it like this. So, air hammer it is, even though it's not my favorite tool to run. You know, sometimes you have to. So like I said last week, I've decided to screed to the top of the pad on this back section of the shop, even though this is the highest portion of my existing pad, the old pad, and is really about an inch and a quarter, this back 25% of the shop, about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half higher than what I really want to be. So what that will do is end up with a pad that slightly slopes to the outside wall here. Now I don't plan on washing down cars or anything like that in here, so it's really not a concern as far as where water's going to go. And if it ever was, you could end up, you could put a drain in this wall and it wouldn't, wouldn't make any difference. But water will tend to want to run to, to this side because of this issue. But, you know, this is a rebuild and not new construction. So you just have to settle on some imperfections, you know, and, and deal with them. I'm sure that the guys who've rebuilt old homes can attest, you know, you just try to end up with the product that you're happy with and settle with, uh, you know, it not being exactly what you want. But that's what I'm going to do, run my uh, treated lumber all the way up to the top of the pad instead of the, to the top of the laser on this back wall.
So some of you guys may remember me buying this Bauer 20 volt cordless drill four or five months ago for this project simply because it had the hammer feature. And uh, at the time, I didn't want to spend the money on a higher priced drill, right? I wanted to try this and you know see if it'd meet my needs. And up to now it has actually, it's done pretty good. But today, the battery charger decided that it no longer wanted to charge my batteries. Now luckily I did buy the extended warranty for this thing when I bought it because I you know, expected that I'd probably have some issues and I was correct. So it's always the electronics almost that crap out on these. So I'll be able to get it replaced, but still it's a headache to have to deal you know, with exchange, you know, going to town and dealing with all that. But first problem, a little, little disappointed really that it happened so soon. So these Tapcon anchors, definitely nice. You don't have to deal with setting, you know, a separate anchor in the wall, right? Drill your hole, run the it. You know, they hold pretty good. I like those. A little pricey, but nice. So man, there is a lot of prep work involved in, you know, pouring a concrete pad. A lot of work that a lot of people wouldn't even even think about. but. My idea here is that I want everything to be as straightforward as possible for the guys that come in here to place this concrete. That's all I want them to do. Come in here, pour the concrete in here, screed to my selected points, finish it, and that's it, right? I'll worry about all the details. So still need to finish the form in front of the shop or otherwise my concrete will just pour out in the driveway, which I don't want. So got to do that, finish greasing up uh, or spread my form release agent on my forms here. This is just uh, vegetable shortening. Same thing I used on the uh, forms for the concrete pudding and it worked really well. Not only for fried chicken, right? Multi-use product. Got to remember to loosen these bolts or else these things won't come out when the time comes. And maybe weld on a couple eyelets, that way I have something to pull from. Because as soon as this concrete's set up strong enough to where, you know, it can hold its own shape, these are coming out. Um, Got to figure out where my control joints are going to be because all concrete cracks, there's two types, that that is and that that will crack, right? And hopefully by putting control joints in your concrete, you can persuade the concrete to break in that weakened plane or weakened joint that you uh, intentionally put in the concrete. So I'll probably end up putting three across the pad here, breaking this into four sections, and hopefully it will crack down in that joint and not diagonally across the floor. Now, the reason why I'm doing seven inches of concrete in here, a lot of people would do four, some people do six, right? And I'm doing seven. And the reason for that is because I don't know what the future holds in this building for me. And I have an opportunity to put a good strong floor in here and not try to, you know, get by with as little as would work. Um, could bring in a big boring mill in the future, which I would love to have. Could bring in a power hammer for doing blacksmithing, which is a big interest of mine with that I may try to pursue in the future. I just don't know, right? Forklift, whatever, you get the idea. And I want this to be plenty strong, which it will be. There's no doubt about that. So that's it, I think. Man, I'll be glad to get this done. It'll, it'll be nice to have the roof and the floor done. And then it's just details. So that's it, I think. So thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, and subscribers. You guys are awesome. It's much appreciated. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Waiting for the sun